Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my vanilla planifolia and my epipremnum pinatum. Enjoy with me because I will repot them and use those uh, sphagnum moss poles we made a week ago. And I actually have two with me so um, they don't have to share one. So as you maybe see the footage looks a little bit different right now because I'm recording with my smartphone and uh, well my camera isn't the best anymore because the battery dies like after half an hour of filming and I really need at least an hour or one and a half hours because I have to retake so many things because when I talk in English I make mistakes all the time and so I have to redo very very many things like this uh, and um, so I have to retake many things and that's just taking up a lot of time and when the battery dies in the middle of me filming a video uh, well it's not that nice today I'm using a selfie stick for filming it's not mine by the way I don't know who the hell owns this but I already ordered a tripod for my phone so the pictures will be steady because I'm quite of shaking right now I see and it's just because um, it's so um, exhausting for the hands to hold the selfie stick all the time but who cares however I'm not here to talk about selfie sticks but about plants and that's what I'm going to do today so before I repot those plants I just uh, quickly want to brush over why it's useful to have such a moss pole instead of a cocoa fiber pole or just a wooden stick or something uh, to grow your tropical plants on. The thing is that tropical plants need a lot of humidity and especially epiphytic ones like orchids or tillandsias just need so much water. And at the same time they need aeration as well because in the rainforest it rains once a day heavily and so they get showered once a day and you cannot really replicate that in your home or at least I hope you can't because that would be strange if you just took your watering can and and that's exactly why you should use a moss pole because those cocoa fiber poles you can see everywhere or buy everywhere just don't work in the same way because moss just retains a lot of water and cocoa fiber actually repels water I mean of course it can hold on to it a little bit but uh, it doesn't really soak up the water and uh, give it off like uh, over the course of the day or two days or I don't know what uh, but moss actually does and so this moss pole is actually way better for your tropical plants than this cocoa fiber um, pole everyone is using like me <laughs> so now that we talked about that the question is how do you actually use such a moss pole the thing is that the people are divided on that because many people just put them in the soil and I'm not really a fan of that because I think when you just put it in soil like that um, I think that the moss will degrade very very fast and I do not want that so I'll just uh, take the moss pole put it on top and secure it with some uh, bamboo 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 skewers, steaks, however you want to call them and uh, that should uh, do the trick, I guess. So I actually saw some people using kind of a thick wooden stick, I don't really know how you call them, um, inside those moss poles but the thing is that you really have to wrap that mesh tight around it so it won't uh, just slip off and the thing is that when you um, wrap it very tight you will just uh, compact the sphagnum moss and uh, people People. Yeah, right. Uh, plants don't really like uh, when the sphagnum moss is compacted that much, so I do not recommend that method. So using that moss pole is actually very very easy and you just repot your plant as usual, but you just leave a little bit space for this pole. Then you just take the new growth of the plant and wrap it around the moss pole and you can secure it with some ties or um, how do you call them? I don't really know the English word for it. I don't even know the German word for it But you can use them to make like um, Flower arrangements. I don't know those metal Spiky things uh, or you can actually use bobby pins uh, you can do your hair with um, It's just as easy as that just take something and uh, tie it to the moss pole You can actually use a string to attach the plant to the pole. It's just up to you However, the best moss pole will not give you any good results when you do not water it and it's just so easy to water it because moss is actually very very absorbent when it comes to water 
You can just pour water over it with a watering can. You can use that to inject the water into the pole. And it's just so easy because the moss will distribute the water evenly throughout the pole. You do not really have to make it all soaking wet. You just have to pour a little bit water on top so that the top half is uh, moist or damp. Uh, I don't know <laughs> which word you prefer. And the moss will do the rest of the work for you because it will actually uh, bring the water down to the uh, plant and you do not really have to water the whole thing. So it's just as easy as that but the thing is that it sounds a little bit too good to be true and honestly I could not really find any information about how this thing can be bad in that sense but the thing is that Miss Orchid Girl talked about it in one of her videos it's quite recent I guess I will link it down below and um, she said that the thing with moss is that it's quite acidic and she measured um, a pH of 4.8 I guess and that's quite acidic for plants plants prefer like uh, about 6 to 6.5 and 4.8 is quite acidic and when it degrades it can actually get much much more uh, acidic and so I don't really know how this will turn out for my plants and that's why I'm only using two plants right now and do not go on and report all my plants on those uh, moss poles. So if you see this and think oh yeah I can totally do that that's a great idea just try it with one or two orchids or plants or whatever you have at home and just find out if it works for you or not because um, my environment is maybe drastically different from yours because when people live in I don't know Norway they will have different growing techniques from someone who lives in New Zealand for example and um, Miss Orchid Girl talks about an algae problem or algae and the thing is that she's living on an island uh, it's Cyprus so she's living in Nicosia if I'm correct and there are just so many algae spores in the air and here in the middle of Germany we do not have that problem. Of course we have algae to some extent but it's just not as excessive as in her collection. And when I keep moss moist all the time I will not have the same amount of algae on my moss as she does. So TLDR is just try out things when you see something on the internet because I'm making videos in English but I'm from Germany. And some people in, I don't know, uh, Nevada <laughs> uh, see this video and think, oh yeah, that's perfect, I will try that. But maybe it will not work for them because their environment is just so different. So that's why I recommend, as well as any other person on the internet ever, just trying it with one or two plants at once and just observing what happens. And if it doesn't look good, just stop it and try something else. But I guess at this point it's time to wrap up the video right now and if you liked it please make sure to give me a thumbs up and to follow me and ring the bell so you get notified uh, if I upload something new and uh, please tell me in the comments if you think that the quality of the video is better with my mobile phone and um, I know it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit wonky and uh, wobbly but uh, a tripod is on the way so it will get better I promise and um, well I don't really have to say uh, much more so um, I see you next time bye